Sri Bhagavan said, Salutation to the Devi Prakriti, the Creatrix, I bow down again and again to thee. Thou art all auspicious and grantest the desires of thy devotees. Thou art of the nature of Siddhi, spiritual success, and Vridhi, increase. I bow down again and again to thee. I bow down to the World Mother, who is of the nature of everlasting existence, intelligence, and bliss. O Devi, thou createst, preservest, and destroyest this universe. Thou doest the pralaya, the great dissolution, and showest favor to the created beings. Thus thou art the authoress of the above fivefold things that are done. So, O Bhuvaneshwari, I bow down to thee. Thou art the great, efficient, and material cause of the changeful. Thou art the unchangeable, immovable consciousness. Thou art the half-letter, Arda Matra. Hrileka, the consciousness that ever pervades both inside and outside the universe, denoted by the Bija Mantra Hring. Thou art the Supreme Soul and the Individual Soul. Salutation again and again to Thee. O Mother, I now realize fully well that this whole universe rests on Thee. It rises from Thee and again melts away in Thee. The creation of this universe shows Thy infinite force. Verily, Thou art become Thyself all these lokas, planetary regions. During the time of creation, thou createst the two formless elements, akasha and vayu, and the three elements with form, fire, water, and earth. Then with these thou createst the whole universe and showest this to the enjoyer Purusha, who is of the nature of pure consciousness, for his satisfaction. Thou again dost become the material cause of the twenty-three tattvas, mahat-tattva, etc., as enumerated in the Sankhya system, and appearest to us like a mirage. O Mother, were it not for Thee, no object would be visible. Thou pervadest the whole universe. It is for this reason that those persons who are wise declare that even the highest Purusha can do no work without thy aid. O Devi, thou createst and art giving satisfaction to the whole universe by thy power. Again, at the time of Pralaya, thou swallowest forcibly all these that are seen. So, O Devi, who can fathom thy powers? O Mother, Thou didst save us from the hands of Madhu and Kaitaba. Then thou hast brought us to this Mani Dvipa and showed us thy own form, all the extended regions and immense powers, and given us exquisite delight and joy. This is the highest place of happiness. O Mother, when I myself, Shankara and Brahma, or any one of us is unable to fathom thy inconceivable glory, who else can then ascertain thee? O Bhavani, who knows how many more than the several regions that we saw reflected in the nails of thy feet exist in thy creation? O one endowed with infinitely great power, O Devi, we saw another Vishnu, another Hara, another Brahma, all of great celebrity in the universe exhibited by thee. Who knows how many other such Brahmas, etc., exist in thy other universes? Thy glory is infinite. O Mother, I bow down again and again to thy lotus feet and pray to thee that this thy form may exist always in my mind. May my mouth always utter thy name and may my two eyes see always thy lotus feet. O revered one, may I remember thee as my goddess, 
and may thou constantly look on myself as thy humble servant. O Mother, what more shall I say than this? May this relation as mother and son always exist between thee and me. O world mother, there is nothing in this world that is not known to thee, for thou art omniscient. So, O Bhavani, what more shall my humble self declare to thee? Now dost thou do whatever thou desirest. O Devi, the rumor goes that Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the preserver, and Maheshwara is the destroyer. Is this true? O Eternal One, it is only through thy willpower, through thy force, that we create, preserve, and destroy. O daughter of the Himalaya mountain, the earth is supporting this universe. It is thy endless might that is holding all this made of five elements. O grantress of boons, it is through thy power and luster that the sun is lustrous and becomes visible. Through thou, though thou art the attributeless self, yet by thy mayic power thou appearest in the form of this prapancha universe. When Brahma, Mahesha, and I myself take birth by thy power and are not eternal, what more can be said of Indra and other devas than this, that they are mere temporary things and created? It is only thou that art eternal, ancient Prakriti, and the mother of this universe. O Bhavani, now I realize from my remaining with thee that it is thou that dost impart, out of mercy, the Brahma Vidya to the ancient Purusha and thus he can realize his eternal nature. Otherwise, he will remain always under delusion that he is the Lord, he is the Purusha without beginning, that he is good and the universal soul, and thus suffers under the various forms of egoism, ahankara. Thou art the Vidya of the intelligent persons and the Shakti of the beings endowed with force, Thou art Kirti, fame, Kanti, luster, Kamala, wealth, and the spotless Tushti, peace, happiness. Amongst men, thou art dispassion leading to Mukti, complete freedom from bondage. Thou art the Gayatri, the mother of the Vedas, and thou art Svaha, Svada, etc. Thou art the Bhagavati, of the nature of the three gunas. Thou art the half matra, bindu or the dot in the glyph of Aumkara, the fourth state, turiya, transcending the gunas. It is thou that givest always the shastras for the preservation of the devas and the brahmanas. It is thou that hast expanded and manifested this whole phenomenon of the visible universe for the liberation of the embodied souls, jivas, the parts of the pure holy Brahman, the full, the beginningless, the deathless, forming the waves of the infinite expanse of ocean. When the jiva comes to know internally and becomes thoroughly conscious that all this is thy work, thou createst and destroyest, that all this is thy mayic pastime, false, like the parts of an actor in a theatrical play. Then, and then only, he desists forever from his part in this theater of the world. O Mother, destroyer of the greatest difficulties, I always take refuge unto thee. Thou dost save me from this ocean of samsara, full of moha, delusion. When my end will come, let thou be my savior from these infinitely troublesome and unreal pains arising from love and hatred. Obeisance to thee, O Devi, O Mahavidya, I fall prostrate at thy feet. O thou, the giver of all desires, O auspicious one, dost thou give the knowledge that is all light, 